In this video, we're going to be using a different kind of way to find missing sides of a right triangle. It's going to be using this thing called the geometric mean, and it kind of comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Um, if we can think about comparing two similar triangles and setting up ratios and solving proportions to find the missing sides, um, that's where this kind of gets the idea from. So if we set up a proportion, let's say that we had A and X. So if we set up that proportion comparing the, the corresponding sides, we would say A over X compared to small to big. And if we wanted to solve for, say, this Y, we would say Y over B comparing another two sets of corresponding parts. And when we do that, it turns out that those variables X and Y are called means. And in certain situations, like the one we just we just did there, we have the thing called geometric means because we're dealing with geometry. So it especially is evident here if we say that x is equal to y. So if these two lengths happen to be the same value, we get this geometric mean. And I'll show you what that looks like. If we say that x equals y, well then we don't have to use y anymore. We could instead write the same x. And so now what we have is x over b equals a over x, or a over x equals x over b. And then when we cross multiply, we end up multiplying something by itself, so we get this, this square. And when we solve for the square, solve for that x, take the square root of both sides, and we end up getting x is equal to the square root of two numbers being multiplied. That product rule comes back. And um, so what ends up happening is getting this geometric mean, this situation right here, that's what it's called, geometric mean. And we can do that with any two numbers. So A and B can be any two numbers. As long as we take the square root of those, we get the geometric mean. So let's practice that for a sec. Uh, if we take the geometric mean of any two numbers, such as 2 and 3, then what we do is we put those, A and B, 2 and 3, under one radical, multiply them together if necessary, or keep them factored to simplify, whichever is helpful. Um, we can't really break this up anymore. These are two prime numbers, so all we can do is multiply them together and get our answer in the square root of 6. Sometimes we're able to simplify. Let's try another example here. If we put 4 times 25 under one radical, we can find the geometric mean. I could multiply this together and get the square root of 100 and then say that equals 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Or I could leave it factored, take out the square root of 4, that's 2, and the square root of 25, and multiply those two numbers out in front. We got rid of our radical, and we still get 2 times 5 is still 10. So the geometric mean of 4 and 25 is 10. That's what we would say. Let's try one more example here. 2 and 6, I want to find the geometric mean of 2 and 6. I put them under a radical, multiply them together. If I multiply them, I get 12. Um, but then I would have to refactor anyways, so let's keep them factored. And say we got our 2, 6, let's factor it down to 2 times 3. And now we got a pair here, 2 times 2. So we'll take out that square and just put 1, 2 on the outside and leave our 3 under the radical and our answer is 2 times the square root of 3 so that's the geometric mean of 2 and 6 All right, so let's apply the geometric mean now to finding a missing side of a right triangle so if you have this example we have a right triangle and this thing right here is called an altitude you can always draw an altitude in any triangle an altitude is a segment that intersects intersects an angle like it does up here, intersects an angle, and is perpendicular 
So it's perpendicular down here to the opposite side. That's called an altitude. Um, if you can draw one or locate it in examples here, it'll help us solve some missing areas of this triangle, missing segments. Um, let's label the parts here because we're going to draw up three formulas here that talk about specific parts. Um, we could always say that really any side, any of these legs, right, the legs um, create the 90 degree angle. They're not the hypotenuse. We could say that these legs are leg one and two. So leg one, I'm just going to say, is the left, for example. Leg two is the right side, just to go in, I guess, order. I could say the bottom is base one. So just this little left side base. And over here on the right side, the little longer segment is base two. And if I add those together, I get what's called a total base. And the altitude here is what that line is, remember? So let's label that. So if I can label all five of those parts, or really six if you include total base, then we can solve for really any of those segments using this geometric mean um, way of doing things here. So let's do, let's do the equations here. So to find leg one, let's look at leg one real quick. I can find the length of that segment by putting in the following formula. Leg 1 equals the geometric mean of the total base, I'm going to say TB for total base, times the base that corresponds with the leg. So base 1 corresponds with leg 1, so I'm going to use base 1 in my formula. If you use that kind of pattern, it helps us with the leg 2 formula. It's the same total base but instead of base 1 now in my formula, I'm going to use the base that corresponds with leg 2, so base 2. That should help you memorize those formulas a little easier. And then my last one is to figure out the altitude. Let's see if I can fit that here. Altitude. So that's that section right there, that little segment. I can figure out the length of that if I take the geometric mean of base 1 and base 2. Those are my three formulas that I can use, and I can find any of those missing parts. So let's apply those, see what happens. Let's say that I have variables in place here. I'm going to solve for all these little pieces. So I'm going to solve for the altitude, leg one, and leg two. And I'm going to be given base 1 and base 2. So 3 and 7 are my bases. So if I think really quickly here, I could figure out the total base. If I just put those together, my total base is 10. And now I have what I need to figure out the missing pieces. So let's do leg 1. And then we'll do leg 2 and altitude. The leg 1 formula said that leg 1, which I'm going to say is A, equal to the geometric mean of the total base, it's 10, times the corresponding base, so base 1 here, so 3. So can I simplify that anymore? Well, 5 times 2 is 10, that's a prime, and 3 is prime, so I can't do anything but rewrite them as a product. 10 times 3 is 30, so the length of A is the square root of 30. If I solve for leg 2, my formula was leg 2 um, is equal to the geometric mean of the total base, so 10 again, times the corresponding base, so base 2, so 7. Well, again, 10, factors of 10 are 5 and 2. We have another prime number 7, so I can't do anything but rewrite it as a product. Um, leg 2, or b, is equal to the square root of 70. Let's solve for that last piece, the altitude. Um, the altitude formula was altitude is equal to the geometric mean of base 1, which is 3, and times base 2, which is 7. Well, again, I have two prime numbers, so let's rewrite it more simplified as a product. C, or the altitude, is the square root of 21. So sometimes you won't be able to simplify, but in other cases you will be. So let's do an example, another one here. Just keep practicing. 
let's say that we're given some different values here. Let's say we're given leg one. Um, we're given the total base here. Let's say that's 18. And let's just go with that. And we'll say that we're missing everything else. X, Y. So that's Z, and here's W. So now I have to think about my formulas and think which of my formulas do I have the most information for? Which can I use? If I'm missing more than two things, I can't really use it. I gotta only be missing one thing in my formula. So um, if I know I have the leg one and I know I have total base, well, if I think back to my leg one formula, I'm only missing base one. So think back to your leg one formula. So leg one is six. And that's equal to the geometric mean of the total base, 18, times base 1. So base 1 is x right now. So now we got to think back to solving for a variable that's under a radical. How do we undo a radical? Well, the opposite of that would be to square. So if we square both sides, we can undo that and then solve for x. So on the left, we get 36. Over on the right, if I square a square root, I'm left with what's underneath. So we're left with 18x. And then to solve for x, I just divide by 18. 36 divided by 18 is 2, so x is 2. So b1 is 2, or base 1. I can solve for more pieces here. Let's get rid of this other stuff. Solve for solve for y here because it turns out being a lot easier than you think. If I know that my total length there is 18 and my length here is 2, well, what more do I need to get 18? That's whatever y is. So 18 minus 2, or the difference there would be 16. 16 plus 2 would give me 18. So y is 16, so that was easy. So now we have both of our bases. We could solve for the altitude next or leg two, it doesn't matter, let's do altitude. So W equals, the altitude equals the geometric mean of our two bases, so two and 16. Well, if we remember that 16 is a perfect square and take out its root, the square root of 16 is four, and two stays under the radical, so four times the square root of two is our altitude length. And now all we got left is leg two. Leg two formula, y, or leg two equals the geometric mean of the total base, so 18, times the corresponding base, base two, so 16. Uh, let's simplify or factor 18 just a little bit here. That would be two times nine. And so if we have two times nine times 16 all under one radical, we could take out our perfect squares. Take out the square root of 9, put it on the front. Take out the square root of 16, put it on the front, and multiply those together. We still have 2 left under the radical. 3 times 4 in the front is 12. And we still have the square root of 2 left over. So 12 times the square root of 2 ends up being the length of leg 2. So that's how we can use geometric means to solve for missing parts of right triangles. We forgot our little right angles here. There we go. So try and remember those three formulas and it will help you find missing parts of a right triangle.